Today we're, the purpose of today's lesson is we are solving a system of linear equations by graphing. Um, today we're working out of the green book, page 360, 1 through 20 all. Um, you'll need a straight edge, some new vocabulary, a solution, and system of equations. So a system of equations is two or more equations involving the same variables. First, we're given two equations. Kind of separate the equations. In the first equation, the easiest way to graph is with slope-intercept. So take the first equation. We identify our slope and our y-intercept. Our m equals 2, and our b is negative 1. So when I begin to graph, how do I graph? Who was answering that question? Dion. Dion. What, where do I start? I start on the y-intercept at? at negative 1, and I put a point. From there, I'm going to do what? Keep going, Gideon? I mean, yeah, go Gideon. Oh, sure. Uh, you're going to do the slope, which is 2 or 2 over 1, so you would ra use rise over 1. I'm going to rise how much? Rise 2 and, and rise 1. Which way am I running? Uh, to the right. To the right. I'm going to rise 2, run 1. Rise 2, run 1. Rise 2, run 1. I could also do, yes? Um, negative 2 over negative 1. Negative 2, down 2, left 1. Good. So we could make that also. Remember, a negative 2 over negative 1 is equivalent to a positive slope. And so we're done graphing that. We now take the other equation. Again, we get y alone. What do I need to do to get y alone? How about Turner? I don't add it. It's already positive. Divide? Okay, I'm doing the opposite of it. It's, it's, I'm going to subtract x from both sides, and I get y equals negative x plus 5. Now, what do I have to do, Jean? We got y alone. Oh, sorry. Um, and then we subtract y from it. Nope. We, we need to get y alone. Y is alone. What is the next step, Louis? Solve for m and b. Identify m and b. Use those words. Use that word, identify m and b. Okay, what is my m, Louis? Uh, negative 1 over 1. Use the variable. M equals negative 1 over 1, and go. Uh, B, the Y intercept, or B is equal to 5. Good. And where am I starting, Logan? Uh, you're starting on the Y axis at 5. At 5 on the Y axis, and now I'm going to go, I'm going to rise negative 1, go down 1, and then if I turn this into a fraction, it goes over positive 1, right? I don't add another negative. So I'm going down one and to the right one, positive one. Down one to the right one. Down one to the right one. Down one to the right one. So the down movement is negative. The right is positive. A negative divided by a positive is a negative. And then we draw the line. Now, a solution to a system is that point of intersection. Where do they intersect, Maxim? Okay, I'm going to move over 2 and up 3. It's over 2 and up 3. So the solution to the system is 2, comma, 3. And notice I put it in parentheses. I put it in parentheses because this is an ordered pair. It's not a list of solutions. It's an address on the coordinate plane. Okay? So 2, 3 is the solution to the system. Okay? When we solve systems of equations, there's three things that could happen. We could have a point be the solution. We could have the situation, what happens when we graph like this? Two lines, well, it's supposed to be. What would the solution be, Jenna? Would it be no solution? No solution. When they're parallel, there's no solution. Okay, and then we could have something like this. Um, 
I'm going to try and do this the best I can. I could have one equation that looks like this, and then another one, it ends up like this, and it's right on the same line. One equation might look like this, y equals x plus 2, and the other one looks like uh, negative, uh, what did I put? Negative x, negative 2x. Negative 2x plus 2y equals 4. Okay? Tell me the solution set there. Yeah. Actually, I have a question. Tell me the solution there, Jonah. Infinite number solutions. Infinite solutions. Because the, they actually are the same equation. They're just written differently. So when it's the same equation, they're really kind of lying on top of each other. It's infinitely many solutions. Yes. Okay, so if you have three lines on a graph and two of them meet, but one of them doesn't... Then there's no solution to the system. They have to all intersect. Okay? okay? All right. So let's try one on our own. Separate the equations, solve for y, and then identify your m and b and graph each equation. Do one equation, then graph. Do the other equation, then graph. I'll be coming around in case you are having trouble. So um, one thing that I'm noticing as I walk around and look at everybody's work, I saw some people not connecting the points. I need you to connect the points. I saw others that got Y alone, and then they didn't identify M and B. If you don't identify M and B, I'm going to not give you points. Got it, Logan? Okay, but that book shouldn't be read right now. So my M is negative 1, my B is 1. I think a lot of people may have done the, the slope wrong here. So I'm starting at B, negative 1, and then I'm going to rise negative 1, go down 1. I'm going to convert this. I'm converting it to a fraction. This is my rise. This is my run, and I'm going to go down 1, right 1. So this is positive 1. The other one, go down one, negative one, right one, positive one. Down one, right one. And I'm going to do the same here. Okay. I draw my line. Forward. I'm drawing my line. And then I go on to the next problem. Another big problem I'm seeing when we subtract x, we, we're going to do the opposite of minus x. I'm adding x. Right here. Right here. When we divide all sides by 2, that's all terms. We can divide unlike terms by 2. We cannot add and subtract unlike terms. But we can multiply and divide unlike terms. Like I can do x times y equals xy. I can do 2 times x equals 2x, but I cannot do 2 plus x. It will still equal 2 plus x. Do you understand? So to, to get the y alone, I have to divide both so all terms by 2. So then we get y equals, what is the coefficient of x that's not written, but it's really there? It's 1. So my it's 1 half x plus 2. So, Danielle, all right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to separate our equations. We're going to solve for y. Uh, subtract x on both sides. m is equal to negative 1. b is negative 1. So I'm starting at b on the negative 1 on the y-axis, and from there I'm going to go rise negative 1, run positive 1. Rise negative 1, run positive 1. Rise I could also take that negative in the denominator, right? We can take that negative. I don't know why it's not writing right now. Oh. I could take that negative in the denominator and make that positive. So now we are going to rise positive 1 and run negative 1. Rise positive 1, run negative 1. Basically, then connect the points. Questions? Okay, 
Um, I'm going to take the next one. A big problem, so I'm adding x to both sides. A big problem that I'm seeing kids do, they're dividing by 2, they're dividing by 2. What am I doing wrong here? Not divide. Yes. I'm not dividing the x. I need to divide all terms by 2. Okay, so I end up with y equals, what's the coefficient of x? Y. 1, so we end up with 1 half x plus 2. So I start at 2, I'm rising 1, I'm running 2. Rising 1, running 2. Or running, rising negative 1, running negative 2. Okay, and then we are drawing that line. Okay. Okay, now what is the solution to this system? Solution. Ethan. So since they're meeting, they, well, they're meeting at negative 2, 1. Negative 2, comma 1, and that is the solution to the system. Okay, questions? Thank you for being, yes. Oh, yeah. There's a way to do it in the graphing calculator, and we're going to also learn how to do it. Um, we're going to learn how to do it algebraically two different ways. Um, this is the most unreliable method because, first of all, it's time-consuming. Nobody wants to graph if they don't have to. And, and second of all, the problem is, what happens if you get something like this? There's no way to figure out where that point of intersection is. So it only really works with some graphs. Do you understand? But for tonight, you are solving by graphing. Um, yes? Are you going to be teaching us the other Yeah, of course. Each day, you'll get a different method. The only thing, you, you don't have to do two points because this one point should be accurate. That means your lines have to be accurate if you end up with the correct point. Yes? How many different methods are there? Three. Okay, we're going to just stick with this right now. All right. Um, so another part of your homework that you'll end up having is you'll be given two equations. Read the directions. Uh, let's go, Jean. Okay, they're not asking us to solve. They're only asking, is this the solution? 2 comma 1 for the system. So what we do is we write each equation and we substitute. In your work, I expect to see the equation, the substitution, the equation, the substitution, and the original point. Okay, so I'm going to substitute 3 times, that's an x comma y in your ordered pair. You should be writing this down. This should be your sample. And I'm going to substitute 3 times 2 minus 1 equals 5. 3 times 2 minus 1 equals 5. 3 times 2 is what? 6. 6 minus 1. Is that equal to 5? Yes. 5 equals 5. So we're going to say true or yes. That's a solution for that equation. Now we're trying the next one, Gideon, which is 2x plus y equals 10. I have to try the same point. 2 times 2 plus 1 equals 10. So it's 4 plus 1 equals 10. Is that a true solution? 5 does not equal 10, so we say false. Now, this solution, 2 comma 1, is a solution to the first equation, but not to the second equation, so it's not a solution to the system. I expect you to get down to the bottom where 5 equals 5, or 5 does not equal 10. Okay? And you're going to say, your answer is going to eventually be, 2 comma 1 is not a solution to the system. And then somebody said to me, well, what is a solution to the system? What is a solution to the system? We don't know. 
It's not asking us that. It's only asking, is this a solution to the system? Okay, next one. Um, Ethan. Oh, actually, I want you guys to pause the recording, and I want you to do this. For one, the first equation, number two, I guess it is, really. It's the first equation in, in number two is x minus 3y. When I substitute, is it a solution? Jean, is 4 negative 1 a solution? How's it going to read? 4 minus... 4 minus 3. 4 minus 3. You can't say minus negative. That's two negatives. So 4 minus 3. No, what about the y? Times... Okay, and so when I substitute, so I get 4 minus, uh, we end up with 4 plus. And does 7 equal 7? Yeah. So yes, it's a solution. I'm going to try the next one. Negative x plus 2y equals negative 6. Negative 4 plus 2 times negative 1 equals negative 6. Negative 4 minus 2, does that equal negative 6? Yes. Negative 6 equals negative 6. Is this a true statement? Yes. yes. So the question is, is this solution, this point, a solution to this system? Yes. Yes, it's a 4, 1 is a solution to the system. Notice I'm not using braces because these are ordered pairs. They're not asking me for anything else. So anything else you're answering is not following directions. Mm -hmm. Okay? There's Yes? So I have a question. So uh, let's say you're doing it, and for the first equation, it's already uh, false. You then you can say it? false. You can say no. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to skip this one. Sometimes they're a little bit far off the grid. You don't have to have your X and Y axis... We don't have to have the x and y axis um, exactly in the middle. You could drop an x axis or raise one or move it to the right, a y axis. Um, now, this is why it's unreliable. Go yeah, back to recording. Okay, so um, one of the big problems with this method is exactly this. When we're here, you can't really, mathematicians do not like to eyeball it. So, because there's no way to tell exactly, I, like I think that looks more like a third, okay? But it, they're saying it's four and a half comma negative one. So you may encounter some problems, I think this book does do that, but for the most part, I wouldn't give you something like this on a test by graphing. Okay. I'll give you one of the algebraic methods that are easier to solve. All right, I want to try one word problem. Pam has $120. This is kind of an easy word problem. Uh, Pam has $120 and is spending $5 per week. Lorenzo has $20 and is saving $750 per week. When will they have the same amount of money? What are my unknowns? What are my two variables going to represent? Logan? Emerson? Uh, started money in weeks. Okay, your money you have in your account and your weeks. And what's the depender? The amount of money you have in the account and your, your, your weeks. Um, what's the depender there? Adam? Um, the money depends on what week The money depends on the weeks. So X is your weeks and Y is the amount of money you guys have, the total money in the account. So now what's the first equation going to look like? Let's start with y. The amount of money that Pam has is equal to what? What's her base starting amount? 120. 120. And what's the rest going to look like if it says $5 per week, Cameron? Minus 5x. Right. Since she's spending, we're doing minus 5x. Oh, spending. 
And then the other one, the next, the next equation, how about Oliver? Um, 20, Start with the Y. 20 plus 750. 750. 50X. Thank you, X. Okay, so we have our two equations. We can graph it. This is, this is the section that we call solve by graphing, right? So remember, my y-axis is my money, and my x-axis is the weeks. Our money, remember, the highest it's going to get is 120. I mean, we just really have to go to the point where these guys meet. So if this person's going down... I would think that that would be the maximum. So I can do things by 20s or by, you know, I, my weeks don't have to match my scale of my money. So I'm going by ones for each line. And I'm going to make a table because it's a pretty easy equation. So when X is zero, how much do I have in my account? When X is two, 110. When X is four, when X is six, when X is eight, okay, at 80 and then 70. Um, do the same thing here. I can, oh, and then I want to graph it and draw the line. Do another table. When X is zero, what is it? 20. When X is 2, 35. When X is 4, and we graph it. Once I plot it, I can look at the graph. Tell me. Let's now go back to the problem. Let's go back to our word problem. When will they have the same amount of money? Yes. In eight weeks, they will both have the same amount of money, which is $80. Okay. Um, in real life, you see lots of equations like this, like cell phone plans or hire, buying a, a, renting a car. One car company might say it's $30 a day plus 50 cents a mile. What did I say? $20 a day? Okay, $20 a day plus 50 cents a mile. And another might be 30 $30 a day, but then the mileage is cheaper, $0.10 cents a mile. So at one, for, for a certain number of, 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 of miles, one is going to be cheaper, and when you get to a certain number of other miles, the other one's going to be cheaper. You can look at the graph and find that. Okay, that is our lesson. We are out. Yes. yes.